What is up? Welcome back to another episode of It's in the Details. As always, please remember to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, comment, wherever you get the show. Your support is appreciated. Today, we are going through a few things I've been watching over the past few days. Um, Dogs. I watched some dog things. Uh, I watched some real trash, forced myself to watch some real trash TV. And um, I watched a recommendation one of my guests gave us, and it was fantastic. Uh, But first, them dogs. I watched the Westminster Dog Show. Not the dog show, dog show, where all the dogs are prancing around with their owners prancing around. Not that, not that dog show, the agility show. So you've got handlers taking their dogs through an obstacle course. Okay? I wasn't that busy this weekend. Okay? I watched the dog, <laughs> the dog show. It was good, though. It was fun. It was entertaining. Um... A whole host of breeds. They they went from dogs that were like eight inches all the way up to dogs that were like twenty four inches, and it was great to see all the agility and the skills of these dogs, the um, communication and skills of their handlers. Uh, it was great. But I got a problem. Okay, um, the handlers are out here training these dogs. Presumably years, months, maybe years. There were some dogs shouldn't have been at the competition. They weren't that good. I don't know if they're not training that much or they're just not that fast. But they had some slow dogs out there, some dogs that didn't pay attention, some bad dogs. They had a few bad dogs. No poops, no no poops or peeps on the floor. But the dogs just, they weren't that, maybe the handlers weren't that good. The handlers didn't give the direction necessary for those dogs to succeed. However, they are slow. They're slow dogs. That's the only way to say it. But there are some fast dogs. And not traditionally fast dogs that you think of. Like, if I said fast dog to you, you're thinking about a greyhound, probably. Uh, No greyhounds in this competition. A lot of Sheep dogs, like Australian sheep or cattle dogs, I think they were called, had some some Vishlas, some I saw a Weimariner, some ter- some some Jack Russells, right? But my problem is, y'all been training these dogs for months, if not years, to run through this obstacle course. Who's training you? Who's training you, handlers? You got these dogs out here bussing ass. These dogs are working hard for you. They like obstacles. They like to make you proud. They see all the snacks you give out when they do things you want them to do. And these dogs want to win. And I assume competition is not always about winning. But it is competition. So you should try to win. And you worked hard to get these dogs in a position to where they could win. And uh, who's training you? Now, this is not, this has nothing to do with the shape of the handlers. I've lived long enough that I've seen all sorts of athletes compete at a range of sizes heights and widths, and still dominate their sport. I can still distinctly remember one woman I watched play volleyball. This woman just floated across the court. You couldn't believe how well she moved and how agile she was. She was ridiculously good, okay? I'm not talking about shapes and sizes of people. I'm talking about abilities, Agilities, speed, quickness, lateral movements. That's what you've been training these dogs to do. 
I'm not saying these dog handlers need to go and get ripped like Brad Pitt and Snatch. You know, like, they don't need abs to run these dogs through these obstacle courses, okay? It's not about the size. It's about the ability. You know you're going to need to run this dog through an obstacle course for anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds, okay? You don't even have to run to every obstacle. The dogs are pretty well trained. You just point or yell, and they just make a right turn up over the hurdle, another turn down through a hoop. You, 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 like, you, really, these handlers are probably taking about 20, 25 steps. And you're falling down? Kin tape? Ankle braces? There are two people that stick out in my mind from this whole competition. One woman was wearing not one, but two ankle braces. So, (laughs) to run around an obstacle course with her dogs. So, either she's been training real hard and parts of her body are given out, and that's what happens when you train hard. If that's the case, good for you. If not, keep working at it. Keep slugging away. The second case was a man. This man had a fast dog. This dog could have won. Okay? A fast dog. Now, this man had kin tape on his calf muscles. Okay? So, this could be the same situation as the lady. Okay? Maybe he's training hard and... I stumble onto the TV at the wrong moment and I see this man with his fast dog who did not win because his owner was not in the physical conditioning to get him to the finish line when he needed to get there, okay? But this man with the kin tape, not only did he not have the physical abilities, but he was not good at reading the course himself. So they had a little tricky situation on the obstacle course It's the same obstacle course for every dog, same tricky situation for every owner. This man made a misread, and then his physical abilities failed him. And when he realized he needed to catch up to his dog coming out of this tunnel, he started to stumble, okay? He started to stumble bad. And he had one of those dogs in the 10 to 12-inch range. This is a small dog and a large man. And the man started tumbling towards the small dog coming out of the tunnel. And we almost had a fatality. He almost squished that dog. Handlers. Physical conditioning. There's nothing worse. I don't, there's nothing I hate worse, I think, with dog stuff than watching a handler take a dog to a competition and the dog loses because the handler could not handle. The dog has one minute pace inside of its body. The handler has two minute pace inside of his body. One minute pace will win the race, two minute pace, flat on your face. Handlers, give your dogs a chance. Trash TV. I don't like calling anything trash TV. But if we're being honest, there's some trashy TV out there. Some real trash. And it's trash for whatever reason. The uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, trash TV, I guess, is in the eyes and ears of the watcher. And I watched some. I saw a commercial for the celebrity dating game. The celebrity dating game. Now, there's a lot of problems with the celebrity dating game. Uh... Do you believe these celebrities are going to go on dates with any of these people? 
these regular rum dums that they cast on this show. Uh, it's like a, a glimpse back into reality TV past of every single person that is on the show either wants to be an actor or a comedian or a model or whatever it is. Uh, that's who they had on the show. These were all, they had two female celebrities and then they had male contestants. They all want to be on TV. So strike one, I don't believe any of these people are going on any dates. Okay. Strike two, the hosts. Zoe Deschanel seems like a very fine lady. She seems very funny. She always seems sweet whenever I see her. Fine. And Michael Bolton. Now, I promised I was. I promised myself I was going to look up how old Michael Bolton is. I, I think I'm going to do it right now while I'm talking to you people. But why Zoe Deschanel and Michael Bolton on the same show at the same time? I don't know. Did it work? Not really. Michael Bolton's 68 years old. Now, I don't mean to defame this man and his 68 years. On the show, he looks about 80. The celebrities, early, late 20s, early 30s maybe, so far. The contestants, same, if not younger. Zoe Deschanel, I don't know, it may, maybe 30. What happened in production that made them think these two would be a good pair? And Michael Bolton doesn't do any heavy lifting. He sits next to a piano. The first episode, at least, didn't have any, didn't have any ad libs, didn't have any chime ins. Zoe Deschanel doing all all the hard work. She's very very pleasant to watch as well. But the two of them together, I don't get it. Michael Bolton, they have him come in from time to time with a little piano riff. He sings a song as a clue about who these people might be, the mystery celebrity. I mean, he sings fine. Not great. There was nobody else you could pair with Zoe Deschanel than Michael Bolton. Like, Dating Game is an old show. This is a, a rehash if you said Michael Bolton was going to be the host, the host, okay, I guess that's old stuff. He's old stuff. Put it together, release it. Maybe old people will watch. But you made new stuff with new people and old Michael Bolton. No shade to Michael Bolton. He, he seemed like a nice man, too. He didn't seem like he necessarily knew where he was. But it was trash. I will not be watching any more of that. Unless maybe, maybe a celebrity I really want to see ask dumb questions to people who are going to give dumber answers. Speaking of which, the first round was with a woman named Hannah Brown, I think her name is. She's she from The Bachelor. She was on The Bachelor or Bachelorette. So she's double, dip, double dipping on dating shows now, lady. You're greedy. And I, I heard someone broke your heart. I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry for you. But you're greedy. One of the contestants, uh, an aspiring comedian, made a joke about playing video games on a date with Miss Hannah. And she did not respond favorably to the idea of playing video games at all. And as a comedian does, he kept calling back to the video game thing. Maybe he didn't want to win the date or win the show, because I, again, I don't know that they're actually going on any dates, but maybe he didn't actually want to win the date, so he kept drilling the video game thing so she wouldn't pick him. If that was the case, brilliant. But he knew her from the show. He watches the show. I think he would have wanted to win that date. The guy to his right, uh, man, he could have been competing at that Westminster dog show. 
He looked, he reminded me of a golden retriever. He was golden. You know how golden retrievers always seem cute and, and, and sweet and caring? He seemed that too. And golden retrievers, typically, not the brightest dogs. This guy, wow. He didn't, I mean, you should watch. Track down this first episode. You only have to get through the first half hour. You should watch and see the responses this young fella gave. Whew, golden retriever. The second round was uh, a mystery celebrity named Nicole Byer. Now, that was fun because I just talked about Nailed It, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Nicole Byer from Nailed It was the second celebrity. And my favorite thing about these dating shows, with these blind date shows, is they know who the person picking is. And I imagine the person picking gives them some input on who they'd like to see on the other side of that wall. Now, Nicole Byer clearly told these people, I want my men chocolate. Don't put no non-chocolate men on the other side of that wall, please and thank you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> no non-chocolates for Nicole Byer on Celebrity Dating Game. Furthermore, she said, I like my coffee black, but I will also take a latte, but definitely no flat whites. <laughs> not, not for Nicole Byer, boy. Whoo! Oh man, that show is trash. But watch, watch this, <laughs> watch this first episode. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Michael Bolton. Why? Golden Retriever Man. Dumb questions. But if it helps you wind down at the end of the day, do you. And finally, the recommendation came from my friend Amy. I watched the documentary AlphaGo, A-L-P-H-A-G-O, all one word. You can find the documentary on YouTube. I watched it for a second time, and it has 24 million views. Now, I don't typically care about stuff like that, but for a documentary on YouTube to have 24 million views about a, 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 a AI and a game I'd never heard of until Amy brought it up was a bit startling to me. I don't claim to know or be worldly and everything, but I was startled by the fact that there are 24 million views on this video. And it's an hour and a half, and it's worth every minute of your time. You can't really take your eyes off the screen because it's shot well, uh, and there are a lot of subtitles. You're gonna do a lot of reading, but again, worth every second. Now, I feel Amy undersold it a little bit. Uh, I feel her description, or at least to me, it feels her description was a little bit vague. I feel like it's actually a good thing that she undersold it because I'm doing the same thing right back to you right now. The less you know about it going into it, I think actually makes the documentary that much better once you get rolling and get through it. But it's about the game called Go. I think people have been playing it for thousands of years. It's way more complicated than chess. There are so many, almost infinite number of moves you can make and boards you can create. Um, People in AI refer to the game as the holy grail because it's so difficult to program um, a computer to be able to play this game and beat people. It's, in, it's an interesting game and concept as well because the idea of having to play this seemingly hu human 
interactive, intuitive game, and you're playing against someone that doesn't give you any of that energy back. You can't pick up any tells. Um, it's got to be maddening to be so used to playing that game specifically across from another person, and instead now you're playing a computer. It's got to kind of be like uh, someone from the 80s who really played poker hard back in the 80s stepping in to a poker room now and seeing everyone wearing sunglasses and thinking, what stupid game are these people playing? You can't wear sunglasses. I got to look in your eyes, man. I can see your cards through your eyes. I know what you're going to do, not with these glasses on. This has got to be the same thing for a remarkable Go player playing essentially no one. But this doc, I mean, the number of twists and turns that happen in this documentary that you just can't seem to believe are happening, um, it's plentiful. Like, it's not a, it's not like a, it's not like a, a Christopher Nolan movie or something. We're not talking about Inception, but for a documentary about AI and a board game, a refreshing number of twists and turns reveal themselves throughout this documentary. Uh, and it's it's about a game you likely have never heard of, you've never played. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The, the experts involved are great. Um, the AI team, the players, just the, the documentary is so well made and it flows so well. It feels uh, off the top of your mind, or at least to me, it feels like something that could drag, but it doesn't. It just keeps moving, it keeps going quickly, and it was really enjoyable. It's also a really beautiful story about how we think, how computers think, um, what creativity is, what thought is. These are like some, these are big ideas, but um, our interaction with humans, machines, everything. Um, this documentary forces you to think about all of those things and think about all of those things in different ways, different angles, and uh, really forces you to think, how can you become a better human by just sometimes even thinking outside of the box? But uh, the machines are coming, y'all. I don't have an Alexa. I don't have, I don't use Siri. I'm a bit of an old man that way, but... They're already they're already in our lives so much. I I don't need I don't need to give them more avenues into my. Did you hear? Amazon is like creating a link between all of the Ring cameras that they've got to for something called Sidewalk, so they can link all of that stuff together and and collect even more information on what you and everybody else is doing. That's a lot. I don't know that we need all of that stuff happening. I don't have a ring. I live in a, an apartment, but it doesn't seem to matter. All of you with your rings and your Alexas and all that stuff, you got them recording everything we do on the street anyway. Thank you. The machines are coming, y'all. They're coming. Once again, Thank you very much for tuning in. Please share, like, subscribe, rate, comment, review. Once again, your support is so appreciated. Take care, y'all. See you in a week. Peace.